Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about linear finite element analysis. And uh, in my previous two videos, I demoed short codes written in Python that implemented the finite element method. And that was in, in order to demonstrate how easy it is and how few lines of code is required to actually solve uh, certain problems using a finite element approach. Today I'm going to start a little bit about uh, the theory the behind the equations that were coded up in these Python examples. And um, I'm going to try to derive where the finite element method comes from. And uh, it's kind of interesting if you haven't seen this before. It's almost like magical. How can this finite element program solve these equations and figure out what the stress and strain is in some kind of product or part that you're interested in? Certainly that can't be done by pen and paper, right? So. Here, I'm going to try to explain where this comes from. It comes from a kind of a surprising way, and uh, it, it's really built upon the principle of virtual work. And uh, what is that? That's what I'm going to talk about today, where this comes from and how you can derive it. And then later on, I'm going to create another video where I go into, where I tie this into the actual implementations more. Um, so today, I'm going to start with just force equilibrium, which is a stepping stone to virtual work. So the force equilibrium starts with Newton, Newton's law, F is equal to MA. It's a lot of things comes back to Newton. And uh, if you write Newton's uh, equation for a solid body, a body that can be deformed, it can be written in this way. So we have BI is a body force in a certain direction. We, we uh, take the uh, integral of the body force over the volume. Uh, lowercase ti is a surface traction, so it's a force on the surface. And we sum that over uh, the area using an integral. And on the right side here, we have mass times acceleration, right? Now, in order to, to simplify this equation, what we need to remember is that this is a volume integral. This is an area integral. We really want to convert this area integral to a volume integral. And uh, there are two steps to it. The first one is to convert the surface traction to a stress. So here is something that you may have seen before. The surface traction is by definition the same as the stress um, and this, the direction of the surface at that point. So sigma j i n j gives you the surface traction in the i direction. So that's just how it is. You can take this and plug it into this second term here, and then you get this equation. And this now is suitable to be simplified by going from an area to a volume. And the way we do that is to use the divergence theorem. So the divergence theorem comes up in many times in theoretical solid mechanics and other fields. And one way to write the divergence theorem is this was shown down here. It shows you how you can go from an area integral of the surface of a body to a volume integral over the interior of that. So if we plug that in, we'll end up with this equation. So the beauty here is we're going from uh, uh, volume and area integrals to just a volume integral. And this is the equation that is very useful in many cases. So if we take this equation and put it on a new piece of paper here, um, this has to be true for any volume or any part of the volume of the body that I'm interested in. So therefore, this has to be zero because uh, I can divide it in any way I like. Uh, so if I don't have an acceleration, there is static conditions, then the equilibrium equation can be written like this. Sigma j i comma j plus the body force i has to be zero. And recall when I write this sigma j i j, this is index notation. Sigma is the second order tensor, there are two components to it. Comma j is a partial derivative with respect to uh, the j uh, direction. So, so that's the equilibrium equation that I quickly derived. And what's cool about it, it's valid for any materials, any and all materials. This is always true if it's in equilibrium. Now, I did this so we can get to the second part, which is the principle of virtual work, which is one of the foundations of the finite element method in a kind of an interesting way. So the, the principle of virtual work is really just a global form of the equilibrium equation. The equilibrium equation tells you at this point in the body, this is how the stress in the body force has to be. And the principle of virtual work is looking at it in a more global form. So 
to start that derivation, uh, you can say that, well, here is the equilibrium equation again on the left here. We know that's equal to zero. So I can still integrate that quantity over the volume, and I can multiply it by some arbitrary displacement field, delta ui. And then I look at the surface, and here is also something that's zero. I integrate that over the displacement field as well, over the surface. So by putting it in this way, this seems kind of weird. I know this is zero. Why are we integrating it this way? But by doing that, we can then do a little bit of math. We apply the divergence theorem again. And you can show, and I'm not going to do it here today just to save time, that you can show this equation at the bottom, which is the, the uh, equation of virtual work. You can see that um, this, this is a volume integral over stress times this uh, virtual dis uh, strain field that comes from the virtual displacement field. Uh, B is the body force, this is the displacement field, and this is surface traction, and this is point forces. So um, here is the equation again uh, of, of, of virtual work in the index notation. Now, we really want to try to get over to the concept of finite elements. So the first step here is to rewrite this equation. Instead of just uh, an integral over the volume, we divide the volume into little elements, and then we replace this integral over volume as the integral over each element, and then we sum over the elements. So that's mathematically equivalent. And I also wrote this equation in, um, in a vector form. So we, these are vectors, this is the transpose of this vector to get us the same uh, results that's shown here. So this is an equation that by itself doesn't s seem very useful. <laughs> How are we going to solve this? Is this really helping us? It looks more complicated than what we can do, right? Is this really the way to do this? And the answer is yes, it actually is. And the, the way this actually uh, works, and the reason why this is useful is that the, back in the day, uh, someone developed the concept of isoparametric shape functions, which I'm not going to go through today. I'll save it into the next video. By introducing shape functions, you can calculate these volume and area integrals very quickly and numerically uh, very accurately. So that is the foundation of the finite element method. So next time I will talk about that. Hopefully you found this first step, creating the, the virtual work equation into discretized form useful. And next time I will show you how we can actually solve this equation and why this is really a clever approach. So if you have any questions, you can ask them below.